Thomas and friends making tracks to great destinations. Not so slow coaches. There's nothing Thomas likes more than pulling Annie and Clarabel along his branch line. But even though his coaches are very faithful, they do sometimes complain, especially when Thomas goes a bit too fast. He's doing it again, Clarabel. I agree, Annie. He's going dreadfully fast. <laughs> I can hear you two. One day, Annie and Clarabel were complaining as usual. Thomas, slow down. My couplings are cluttering. So Thomas decided to be a little cheeky. <laughs> Deary me, what are you doing, Thomas? Now you're going too slow. You'll need to speed up if you're going to get us anywhere on time. But I thought you wanted me to go slowly. Oh, well, if you want me to go fast... <laughs> Clattering carriages? Oh, that's much too fast. <laughs> Cheeky Thomas! Cheeky, cheeky Thomas! <laughs> By the time Thomas arrived at Dryor Station, he was running rather late. <gasps> Cinders and dashes! I'm supposed to be taking some trucks to the quarry after this. Meanwhile, Caitlin was pulling into the shunting yard. Caitlin was a very fast engine indeed. Hello, Caitlin. What are you doing here? I've been going so fast. I've loosened some bolts, Charlie. I need to go to the steamworks and get them tightened. Can I leave my coaches here and come back for them later? Sure thing, Caitlin. <laughs> As Caitlin pulled away, Thomas arrived at the shunting yard. Sorry, Annie and Clarabel. I'll have to leave you here for a while. I'm late for the quarry. Well, if you hadn't been messing around, Thomas, this wouldn't have happened. Yes, too much going too fast, then too much going too slow. hurried up to the quarry as fast as he could. Thanks, Thomas. Empty trucks and just in time. You're welcome, Mavis. <laughs> Then, he hurried back from the quarry, but... <laughs> Caitlin came back to the shunting yard first. I've come to collect my coaches, Charlie. Coming, Caitlin! Oh, I've got a joke for you. How do bees get to school? Uh, I don't know. On a school buzz! <laughs> Charlie was so busy joking 
he accidentally shunted Annie and Clarabel over to Caitlin, along with her own coaches. Oh, oh, Thomas must be back. About time, too. Ooh. Now, don't go too fast, Thomas. Thomas? You're over there! Well, if he's over there, then who is pulling us? Fizzling fireboxes! Wait, Caitlin! Come back! This is the fastest we've ever been! I don't like it at all! I've got my eyes closed! Does it help? No, not really. At last, Caitlin stopped at Wellsworth Station. Thank goodness for that! Hello, Connor. How about a race up to Ulfstead Castle? Oh dear, a race? Please say no. Please say no. Please say no. You're on, Caitlin. No! Ready, steady, go! No! No! You'll never beat me, Caitlin. <laughs> we'll see about that. Complain about Thomas again? No, will I? If I ever get Annie and Clarabel back, I'll never tease them again. Thomas puffed as fast as he could, but before he could get up to Elfstead Castle. Heading for the mainland. Oh, no. Thomas had to stop Caitlin before she went over the Vicarstown Bridge to the mainland. Oh, no. I'm too late. I'll never be able to catch up with Caitlin now. Hello, Thomas. Hello, hero. It's a good thing I've stopped Caitlin. She was taking your coaches away. Annie and Clarabelle, you brought them back. Thank you. Yes, thank you, hero. Thank you indeed. Oh, Annie and Clarabelle. I'm sorry I teased you. And we're sorry we complained about how fast you were going. We'll never do it again. Thomas wanted to go even faster, but he was so happy to have Annie and Clarabelle back, he just smiled. Although you are going a bit fast now. Much too fast, if you ask me. You're so right, Clarabelle. Much too fast. <laughs> Calling all engines! Calling all engines! It's Gordon! He's the number four blue engine. Gordon is a big engine and one of the fastest and strongest engines on Sodor. He's very boastful and thinks he's much more important than the other engines. He pulls the express and thinks he's the best. But Gordon is good-hearted 
and will use his superior strength to help his fellow engines out of trouble. That's why he's a really useful engine. Old Reliable Edward. Edward is one of the older engines on the island of Sodor. He is a mixed traffic engine, which means sometimes he pulls coaches and sometimes he pulls trucks. He's not the smallest engine. But he's not that big either. Some of the bigger engines like to tease Edward, especially Gordon. It's a shame you're such an old engine, Edward. You're not very reliable. What do you mean? Oh, you know, breaking down all the time. I haven't broken down in ages. Oh, really? The Fat Controller knows that Edward is a really useful engine. And that is why he's given him his own branch line, the line that runs to Brendam Docks. One day, Gordon was pulling the express on Gordon's Hill when he thought he saw a red flag blowing beside the track. Oh, no! That's a danger signal! I'd better stop! Oh, that's not a danger signal! Those are red! <laughs> it was a pair of trousers that had blown off a washing line. <laughs> Then there was trouble. Gordon couldn't start up again on the steep hill with his long, heavy express coaches. Oh! <laughs> Edward had just arrived at Wellsworth Station when the station master stopped him. Gordon is stuck on his hill. He needs a banker engine to give him a push. No, oh, not again. And he says I'm the one that's unreliable. Honestly. Gordon was waiting very impatiently for Edward when Emily came along. <laughs> Having a rest, are you, Gordon? I wish Edward would get here and give me a push before any more engines see me. Oh, dear, Gordon. <laughs> I see you've got stuck on your hill again. It wasn't my fault, Thomas. There were some red trousers by the track, and they looked like a danger signal. Red trousers? Danger signal? <laughs> <laughs> By the time Edward arrived, Gordon was rather cross. You took your time, Edward. You're so old and slow, I'm surprised the Fat Controller keeps you on. You're not moving very quickly yourself, Gordon. <laughs> Gordon was still fuming as Edward pushed him up the hill. <laughs> Express coming through! Aren't you even going to say thank you? Oh. Why is Gordon so ungrateful? He doesn't even say thank you when I give him a push. He only says how old and unreliable I am. Maybe it's time we taught that big engine a lesson. <laughs> that night in the sheds, Thomas and the other engines were teasing Gordon about what had happened. And the only reason he stopped was because he saw some red trousers. <laughs> Gordon claims to be fast and reliable, but he still needed my help to get over the hill. I didn't really need your help, Edward. You just happened to be there, that's all. 
I'm very reliable and exceedingly fast. Is that so? <laughs> I'd like to see you go faster than me. <gasps> <laughs> go faster than you? Oh, don't be silly, Thomas. That's too easy. Very well. You just try and follow me tomorrow morning. No problem at all. I'll even give you a ten-minute head start. The other engines thought Thomas was being very silly if he thought he could go faster than Gordon. The next morning, Thomas met Gordon at Knapford Station as agreed. Ready, Gordon? You'd better get going, Thomas. I did promise you a ten-minute head start, remember? <laughs> I remember. I do hope you know what you're doing, Thomas. We don't want to look silly. Don't worry. Everything is under control. <laughs> Thomas was out ahead on the main line. But he knew Gordon was going to catch up soon. Thomas! I can see Gordon behind us. He's going to pass us. We'll see about that. Pull onto the other track, Thomas. Express coming through. Oh, no. That's not what we agreed, Gordon. You said you'd follow me across the island. Follow you? But... but... Oh, can't you go any faster? Thomas could go faster, but he didn't. And when they got to Gordon's Hill, Thomas started to go even slower. Speed up, Thomas! Speed up! I don't want to get stuck again! But Thomas didn't speed up. He went slower and slower until... No! I am stuck again! <laughs> it looks like I'm going faster than you after all! <laughs> oh. Hello, Gordon. Have you given up following Thomas already? Thomas tricked me, Edward. He went too slow. Oh, dear. But I must say, you don't seem very reliable. Always getting stuck on your own hill. Wait! Edward! You need to give me a push! Oh, but I didn't think you needed any help from me. After all, I'm so old and unreliable. But I do need your help. I promised not to call you old or unreliable anymore! Please! OK, Gordon. I think you've learned your lesson now. And what do you say? Oh, the indignity. Sorry? I mean, thank you. Thank you, Edward. You're welcome, Gordon. Any time.
Thomas and the emergency cable. Thomas loves to work on his branch line, pulling his faithful coaches Annie and Clarabel. Both Annie and Clarabel have an emergency cable. Passengers can use it to sound an alarm and stop the train, but only in an emergency. One day, Annie and Clarabel were watching the passengers at Knapford Station. Look at that big hat! It won't fit through my doorway. <laughs> Uh-oh, noisy boys. I hope they won't be bouncing on my seats. Careful, Thomas. This man needs extra time to get on board. <gasps> Look, Clarabel. There he is again. That man with his binoculars? Yes, it's him. The man with the binoculars got off again at Dryor Station. I wonder who he is. He's been travelling up and down the branch line, getting on and off at every station. Maybe he's a station inspector. Oh, no. I don't think that's right, Thomas. He's always looking through his binoculars. Up into the trees. Maybe he's a tree inspector. <laughs> Never heard of a tree inspector. <laughs> you are silly, Thomas. <laughs> yes, very silly indeed. <laughs> Later that afternoon, Thomas saw the man with the binoculars again. Hello. I hope you don't mind me asking. But what kind of an inspector are you? I'm not any kind of an inspector. I'm a bird watcher, and I'm trying to find a very rare bird. <whistles> oh, better get to my seat. Oh, a bird watcher. Of course. So that's who he is. And that's what he's looking for through his binoculars. And all I had to do to find out was ask him. Oh, you're very clever, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very clever indeed. <laughs> Thomas was hurrying along his branch line when suddenly there was cause for alarm. Somebody had pulled the emergency cable and the guard put the brakes on his coaches. <gasps> Everyone wondered what the emergency could be. I'm sorry. I got a little overexcited. I thought I heard the sound of a very rare bird I've been looking for, and I wanted to see it. So I pulled the emergency cable. In any case, it's bound to have flown away now. Seeing a rare bird is not an emergency. Quite right. I couldn't have put it better myself. What's that sound? My wheel. It has a flat spot now. Annie had developed the wheel flat after being dragged along with her brakes on. Her wheel wouldn't turn. So all the passengers had to squeeze into one coach. And Annie had to be uncoupled and left behind. Don't worry, Annie. Thomas will come back soon. And we'll have your wheel fixed in no time. Thomas didn't like having to leave Annie behind. He felt cross that the man with the binoculars had pulled the emergency cable. The passengers felt cross too. 
And so did the fat controller. The emergency cable must only be pulled when there is a genuine emergency. I'm really very sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. And I promise, I'll never do it again. Very well. Carry on. Thomas came back with Rocky in the flatbed to collect Annie and take her to the steamworks. Oh, my! I'm not sure I like flying about like Harold the helicopter. <laughs> Don't worry, Annie. We'll soon have you back on the rails again. Thomas took Annie to the steamworks to see Victor. I'm sorry, Annie. We don't have the right coach wheels in stock. We'll have to wait for more to be delivered. Oh, dear. Now Thomas had to travel up and down his branch line with only one coach. I miss Annie. So do I. And all because of one passenger pulling the emergency cable. I hope we never see that silly man with the binoculars again. But Thomas did see the man with the binoculars again. He was waiting on the platform at Dryor Station. Well, I'm not going to stop for him. But you have to stop, Thomas. You always stop at the station. I don't have to if I don't want to. Why should I? Hmm. Oh, no! Thomas! Someone had pulled the emergency cable again. But it couldn't have been the man with the binoculars, because he was still on the platform. Stop back there. I need to get off the train. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. <laughs> Luckily, Clarabelle's wheels were not damaged. So Thomas backed into the station to let the lady with the very big hat off the train and let the man with the binoculars get on. This time, the fat controller was cross with Thomas. You must stop at every station, Thomas, and pick up every passenger, whether you're in a bad mood or not. Yes, sir. I know, sir. The man with the binoculars may have pulled the emergency cable when he shouldn't have, but he said he was sorry, and I think he learned his lesson. I'm sorry, sir. And I've learned my lesson, too. At last, Annie got a new wheel and came back to work with Thomas and Clarabelle. Thanks for getting me a new wheel, Thomas. How did Victor find one so quickly? I told him it was an emergency. <laughs> On board for more messy moments. My trousers with Thomas and friends in spills and thrills. Six all new adventures bursting with fun. Cinders and ashes. Faster, faster. And jam packed with sticky situations. Oh. Hook up with old friends. Careful! Have an antique, you know! And make brand new ones. Hello, my name's Porter. Oh, oh James, what a smell. Join everyone's favourite engine. Watch out, Betty, coming through! You're a really useful engine. In Thomas and Friends. Oh. Spills and Thrills. Not again! Available on DVD now. Duck in the Water.
It was a cold, wet winter's day. Duck was at Knapford Station when James arrived. Of all the jobs he is given, James likes pulling coaches best of all. It's a shame you've been stuck with a goods train, Duck. But I suppose somebody has to pull trucks. Oh, I thought you sometimes pulled trucks too. That may be, but splendid-looking engines such as myself should always pull passengers. <laughs> After all, the passengers prefer it. But things don't always turn out the way James would like them to. Oh, who can appreciate my bright red paintwork in this weather? There had been a lot of rain on the island of Sodor, and the rivers were high. was flying over Duck's branch line. When he saw that the track had been flooded, so he went to warn the fat controller. But it was too late. Oh! oh. James was just settling down to have a rest when he saw the fat controller coming across the yard. Uh-oh. I hope he's not looking to give me another job. Ah, oh, James. You have no job at the moment. Duck is stuck in the floodwater and needs to be lifted out. But I'm waiting for my next passenger train, sir. Well, you'd better get going, then. The quicker you rescue Duck, the sooner you'll be back. But, sir... If Duck fell in the water, whose fault is that? It's nobody's fault, James. It was an accident. But I need an engine to take Rocky and help him out. Huh. I thought Ducks liked being in the water. James? James didn't think fetching Rocky was a very suitable job for a splendid engine such as himself. But sometimes, every engine has to do a job that they don't like. That ought to do it! Come on, Rocky. We have to rescue Duck. Oh, OK, James. But you'll have to wait while I have my crane arm secured. Nonsense! Duck is stuck in the water. And the sooner we get him out... The sooner I can get back to doing something more suitable. And James pulled away before Rocky's crane arm had been secured. James! We need to stop! I'm swinging a boat back here! Get a hold of yourself, Rocky. You'd think you'd never responded to an emergency before. <laughs> what are you going to cause an accident? Nonsense! Ducks had the accident. We're just going to rescue him. Whoa! Dad! Slow down! We need to... Whoa! Uh-oh. Rocky's crane arm kept swinging about, but James wouldn't stop. Whoa! Then, as they approached the flooded track, James saw a signal that warned him to slow down. What? What was that? What was what? I knocked something over. I'm sure it couldn't have been anything important. But a signal is very important indeed. Hurry up! It's cold and wet in here. Keep your steam in, Duck. We're coming to rescue you. I don't have any steam, James. The water has put out my firebox. James had to position Rocky in front of him for the rescue. Help 
has arrived. And that's me! <laughs> I'll be glad to have my wheels on dry track again, I can tell you. Honestly, I thought ducks liked being in the water. <laughs> James thought this was very funny, even though he knew Duck wasn't really a duck. Duck isn't even my real name. My real name is Montague. Meanwhile, Oliver was coming along Duck's branch line too, but he didn't see any signal warning him to stop or slow down. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but James was very cross. Oliver, why didn't you look where you were going? There was a yellow signal back there. I didn't see any signal. Um, please, can I get out of the water now? Rocky started to lift Duck back out of the water again, and Oliver started to back up so that his driver could put up a warning flag. But then there was more trouble. By this time, Harold had seen what was going on, and he flew back to fetch the fat control. At last, Rocky managed to lift Duck out of the water. Thank you, Rocky. You're welcome, Duck. So many accidents. How could this have happened on my railway? I'm very sorry, sir, but it must be my fault. I must have knocked down the signal pole. My crane arm wasn't secured, and I was swinging about. And... It was nobody's fault. It was an accident. I was in a hurry to go, and Rocky wasn't ready, so... So... Oh, actually, sir, I suppose it was my fault. I didn't give Rocky time to secure his crane arm properly. That's why he was swinging about. I can't say that I am very happy about this, James, but I am proud of you for admitting what you have done. Perhaps it would be best if you made amends by pulling Duck's trucks while his firebox dries out. Yes, sir, I'd be happy to. Pulling trucks may not be his favourite job, and James knows that he can't always do the jobs he likes best. But so long as the sun is shining, he is a very splendid-looking bright red engine indeed. Once upon a time, there was a small island called Sodor, where the engines were the heroes and the railway their stage. Hit Entertainment invites you to go back to where the adventure began. And who are you? I'm Thomas. Welcome to Sodor. Join Thomas as you've never seen him before. Thomas! <laughs> Oops, sorry. And discover how everyone's favorite engine became the world's number one. Now, it's full steam ahead. This is an emergency. In the journey to become a hero. Thomas, be careful. We mustn't give up. Thomas and Friends, the adventure begins. Coming soon. Thomas's shortcut. It was a sunny day on the island of Sodor. Thomas was pulling Annie and Clarabel on his route. They met Bertie coming along the road. Hello, slow coach. Ignore him, Thomas. He's teasing again. But you're not slow coaches. 
You can go very fast. He's not talking about, about us. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Two minutes early. Good thing I hurried you, or you would have been late. That's not true. I always get my passengers to the station on time. <laughs> you must be slowing down, though, Thomas. Lately, I seem to beat you to the level crossing every time. I'm not slowing down. I'll show you. Let's race again. Thomas and Bertie think racing is great fun. Sometimes Bertie is quicker. Especially when Thomas has to wait for sheep on the line. And sometimes Thomas is quicker. Especially when Bertie has to stop for workmen repairing the road. Slow down, Thomas. You'll burst a valve. You'll rattle an axle loose. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. But lately, every time they have a race, no matter how fast Thomas puffs... Oh, no! Bertie manages to win. You really are very slow these days, Thomas. <laughs> Thomas couldn't understand it. Why was Bertie always there first? I was going faster than ever. Later, Thomas met Bertie again. But he wasn't sure if he was happy to see him. Hee <laughs> hee, don't be cross, Thomas. Should I tell you my secret? What secret? I've been rerouted. Now I take a shortcut, so my route is much quicker. Thomas was very surprised. He didn't know Bertie could take a shortcut. That night, Thomas was very cross. It's not fair. I like to race Bertie, but he's been rerouted. What does rerouted mean? It means to go a different way to the one you usually go on. What's wrong with that, Thomas? Bertie takes a shortcut now, so he always wins. Then an idea flew into Percy's funnel. So, why don't you take a shortcut too, Thomas? Then you could be rerouted just like Bertie. Thomas thought that was an excellent idea. But Annie and Clarabelle didn't. But there's no shortcut on your branch line, Thomas. If you go another way, you could miss a station or make your passengers late. But Thomas was determined. If Bertie could be rerouted, so can I. Thomas arrived at Dryor Station, just as Bertie was arriving too. Some passengers got off, and some more passengers got on. But as soon as he could, Thomas rushed away again. Bye-bye, Bertie. See you soon, Thomas. He didn't want to lose another race. If Bertie can be rerouted, so can I. Thomas came to a junction where the tracks were already switched. Maybe that's a shortcut. But he only ended up running along a loop siding and coming back onto his branch line again. Oh! Then, Thomas found another track that led away from the branch line. Maybe that's a shortcut. We, we don't, don't think so. We, we don't, don't think, think so. so. This time, Thomas ended up in an old goods yard. Oh, dear. That's not a shortcut either. We told you so. We told you so. The passengers were grumbling. But Thomas didn't want to give up. Finally, Thomas spotted an old track that led into the woods. This must be a shortcut. There is no shortcut, Thomas. 
Bertie was waiting for Thomas at the level crossing. He never usually takes this long. Bertie's passengers were starting to grumble too. So Bertie went on his way again. Thomas pushed his way along the overgrown track. Annie and Clarabelle were not happy. Thomas, please! Where are we going? Don't worry. This shortcut is going somewhere. We'll be out of the woods soon, and then... Oh! Oh! Thomas had hit a rotten buffer in the undergrowth, and his wheels had come right off the track. Oh, no! I can't back up! I'm stuck! The passengers were not happy. Now they were going to be very late indeed. Thomas felt terrible. And then he saw his friend Bertie. <gasps> Hello, Thomas. What are you doing in there? <sighs> I was trying to find a shortcut, Bertie. But I've come off the rails. And now my passengers will be late. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> but maybe I can take your passengers for you. Thomas's passengers thought that was a very good idea indeed. But Thomas still felt very silly. <laughs> it was almost dark when Harvey came to shunt Annie and Clarabelle out of the way. Before lifting Thomas back onto the rails again. The fat controller was very cross. Your passengers don't like to be late, Thomas. You have caused confusion and delay. I'm very sorry, sir. I was hoping to find a shortcut. But I will stick to my branch line from now on. A few days later, Thomas was back on the track. He arrived at Knapford Station to pick up Annie and Clarabelle. Thank you, Annie and Clarabelle. I missed you, too. <laughs> Thomas promised to stick to his branch line in the future. He wouldn't try taking shortcuts again. See you later, slow coach. <laughs> but he and Bertie still like to have races. And sometimes... Thomas even wins. See the steam team are happily hooting the strongest engines hauling all those times. We're on our way, we have our fare down to the station. The engines are on there every day. There's so much to do. Hey, Thomas, we know that you'll pull through. All the trains are on time. To know you're coming, we're counting on you. Every day our mail gets through. We're on our way, we have our fare. Down to the station, the engines are all there. Every day there's so much to do. Hey, Thomas, we know that you're 